the Orion HOTAS Windwing's latest flight sim product. Designed as an all-in-one solution, Windwing were kind enough to send me one to review, so let's get into it. Assembly is easy enough and includes all the needed tools. The Orion is the little brother to the Windwing Super Taurus and Libra. At launch, supporting the same FA-18C grips for both units. Along with suction cups, both to reduce size, weight and shipping costs. They also feature removable USB leads, making them very easy to pick up and store away from your desk without fishing through wires. Let's take a closer look at the throttle first. The eagle-eyed amongst you might have spotted that the Orion base shares the same mounting holes and base plate shape as that of the Thrustmaster Warthog, but significantly lighter, making it compatible with existing Warthog desk mounts, although the wire is mounted centred, which might cause issues in specific situations. The default suction cups do an awesome job at holding the throttle in place without slipping around. The base serves as a mini button panel including common important features found on Winwing's standalone panels, with master modes, arm, autopilot and takeoff switches. These are all logically laid out, with the takeoff switches sitting in front of the throttle easily accessible whilst at idle power, although not quite so easy at military or afterburner. The flaps and gear are sensibly off to the right and can still be reached. So this isn't an issue unless you plan on rebinding them to in-flight controls. Unfortunately only the flap switch has a unique cap on it which means it can take a second to find the hook-on approach. The wing fold knob works just like Winwing's panels with the same play issue which Winwing plan to replace in a later version. It gives you the same nice simple control over the Hornet's flaps. The parking brake and gear however are just two position toggles. Along the side we've got two sliders, and the master mode, great for setting camera zoom or nozzle angle. There's also a number of rotary button knobs with push which work great to control radios or turn knobs in the cockpit. Just like these standalone panels, the lighting can be synchronised with DCS if enabled in Sim App Pro, giving you a backlight and master mode lights linked to your in-game cockpit. You can also disable the centre position on a number of the free position switches for better compatibility with certain games. The sliders can be rebound into free position buttons if you prefer, along with the rotary knobs which you can assign any one of these into a virtual axis. Unfortunately you cannot set multiple knobs to an axis at the same time. The core mechanism is all metal with 16-bit magnetic hull sensors, looking very durable with a good length of travel. It glides smoothly without getting stiction or a grainy feeling and doesn't have any wobble. We've got both idle and afterburner detents with accompanying software buttons for idle and off. They're fairly mild, not requiring a lot of force to overcome. I'd have liked to have had an idle cutoff detent as a lift mechanism or at least a harder detent, but fortunately even if you manage to jump the detent with vigorous movement, the actual cutoff button is against the backstop so it's unlikely you will activate this by mistake. The afterburner detent makes it easy to hold at military power, and with a little force you can push into afterburner without the lever jolting as you do so. Rather nicely in the software they provided a quick way to configure the exact axis values that the afterburner detent starts at, and the ability to set profiles for specific aircraft. Very handy indeed, saving you from needing to make custom curves to align these in the sim. Whilst the idle cutoff detent allows you to start or stop your engines with ease using the integrated position buttons. Sadly, you cannot adjust or disable the afterburner and idle detents, although you do have access to independent throttle friction settings with an Allen key and the option to synchronise or unlink the handles with a handle on the side. I do, however, have one concern. To enable the base to accept multiple handles in the future, they've opted to use an external wire which connects to the handles. This gets a little bit squashed when you go into full afterburner, leaving me a little cautious. Winwing assure me it's adapted from towing chain and has an endurance to survive over 10 million flexural motions, which sounds promising. We can expect at some point in the future to see an F-16 handle grip, as you can see from this prototype demonstration video. The handles we have today are those from an FA-18 Hornet, giving you momentary buttons, 3 position air brake switch, 5 position hat switches and the top one of which is a little difficult to press up or down 
owing to its design which on the real aircraft only has three positions, not the five that we get. The radar antenna axis is spring-loaded to return to centre and a little sharp to the touch, making prolonged use a little uncomfortable thanks to the pressure applied to move it. It works great in most aircraft, being easier to make fine adjustments than with the bottom, but aircraft like the F-16 require an antenna axis which does not return to centre. Fortunately, the software comes to the rescue with an easy toggle to switch the antenna into a free position button instead. A good workaround, although I'd have liked to have seen a virtual static axes option added too if possible. The TDC slew control axis has depress and is nice and precise. Having a high pawning rate, it makes the motions feel smooth and easy to control when you're searching for a target, so no complaints here. In the software we've got a few extra options to set round or square motion range, and even a switch mode. Altogether you've got a huge number of buttons on a single panel. This has the common issue of older games not supporting more than 32 inputs per device, WinWing have tried to resolve this by adding a 4x32 button mode, which divides your throttle into 4 unique devices, making the controls binding a little odd, but possible without needing to set up virtual keyboard presses. This is an experimental feature at the moment, and unfortunately this means you lose the ability to program the base axes. The Ryan Throttle is a really solid package with common buttons and fantastic motion, designed around being suitable for many aircraft, giving you a slice of your cockpit under the handles. The unique ability of the throttle to have multiple grips makes it one to watch. Jumping over to the joystick, we've got a very modest base plate, which uses suction cups rather than a wide base. This is great for keeping the desk footprint low, and most of the time it does a great job of holding it in place, even if you thrash it around. Unfortunately, if you need to hold the stick sustained in maximum deflection, I've found the cups will peel off after a short while, which is far from ideal. My desk surface is not exactly smooth, so your mileage might vary, but I've found applying a little downward pressure easily helps keep it planted. Hopefully, WinWing can improve on this with a later revision. That said, the base, just like the throttle, is compatible with existing Thrustmaster Warthog supporting desk mounts or plates, even the Warthog's own plate, which does a great job of holding it if you've got one going spare. Personally, I'd go for a desk mount if you can, however, unfortunately, because the connector wire is not centred like the Warthog's, it will not fit into my Verpool desk mount, so you're going to have to keep this in mind if the desk mount you're using sits flush against the side of the base. The handle connects with a small wire and uses an odd upwards hand screwed bolt, which can be a bit fiddly to install and remove, sometimes being a little stiff or struggling to thread nicely, so take care to ensure it is threaded correctly during attachment. The wire connector makes it easy to add an offset angle to your stick, which is great for centre mounting in a more ergonomic position. The base itself is fairly simple, lacking any customization or adjustments unlike its bigger brother, the Super Libra. Instead, we've got single cams set up with a soft centre and gradual increase in resistance as you push out towards the outside, with no significant centre detent on a medium strength spring. So whilst not customizable, it's a great setup out of the box, being easy to make small corrections in the centre with low resistance, whilst giving fair resistance when you're pulling hard. You will feel the cam sliding into position at the centre, creating a little bit of a pause as you cross over an axis, but it's not a major issue. Neither the stick or base have a built-in twist function being locked in place, however it is compatible with WinWing's extras like their extension, twist grip, or the Warthog handle adapter. Moving up to the handle, we've got the stick used in the Hornet and similar to that of the Harrier, giving you a paddle switch. Undesignate 5-way weapon selection, 2-stage trigger, pickle button, 5-way sensor select switch, 9-way trim pov hat, and a 5-way mini hat. Now this particular switch is just a button on the real aircraft, but here it serves as a hat. Sadly, because of its small size, it's not got a good tactile feel, being a bit mushy, but otherwise works well. All the other hats however feel crisp and are a pleasure to press. The extra push on the trim in particular is very nice to have for resetting your head tracking or just as a trim reset button. The pickle button is a little too easy to depress compared to that of the Thrustmasters. The two stage trigger has a nice first action followed by detent which increases the pressure required to hit the second stage. 
This makes the action feel a little uneven with an increase and then drop in resistance, which I'm not sure if I like, but it does provide a safety preventing you from accidentally pressing the second stage, making it quite practical. Although I can't say I've ever mistakenly hit the second stage on the smooth action of a Warthog trigger. In the software we can reconfigure up to two of the hats as additive axes, which I'm not really sure why you'd want to do, but hey, it's nice to have. You can also configure a global dead zone for each axis if you desire. Putting the throttle and stick together as one HOTAS, you've got a really great setup without bulky gear that sits nicely on a table and has lots of functionality built in. I found myself very quickly able to adjust and perform precision flying with the two working beautifully together without any significant issues. The throttle is responsive with a little greater precision than that that you might find on a Thrustmaster Warthog owing to its longer handles and the push through detents. Whilst the stick makes small corrections simple and reminds you when you're pulling hard, I'd ideally suggest you replace the base plate if you can, but if you keep the suction cups in mind you can hold the base down during long turns without much trouble. As with all desktop potasses, you're going to suffer a few ergonomic issues, being on a tabletop means you've got to hold your arms up to use them, which over a long flight can wear you down. This is compounded by needing to hold the suction cups down in hard turns, and that the Hornet stick itself is really designed for centre mounted use between your legs. It doesn't sport a handrest on the body, making it a little uncomfortable over longer flights, unlike many others, so whilst this is not strictly Winwin's fault, being a replica, it's something to consider and I'd certainly recommend mounting it if you can. Overall I'm quite pleased with the HOTAS, as it gives you a solid set of controls and extra buttons for common cockpit switches. I look forward to seeing what alternative handles become available in the future. The Orion stick base serves as a big upgrade over something like the basic Thrustmaster base, although lacking the custom setup options of something like a Verbal Warbird, and the throttle combines the best of a button panel alongside a great throttle axis with solid internal mechanism, having just a slight long term concern about the wires. The Orion Hotas with Hornet handles will be available soon, on sale for $499 initially, going up to $649 at a later date. With all the recent disruptions, shipping costs and Covid, Winwing are looking to keep the reduced sale price running for a good while. Unfortunately as they're dispatched from China you'll need to consider shipping and any import taxes too. It's a shame that Winwing do not have any outside distribution centres as these can be significant depending on where you live. As always check the comments where I'll pin an update if any long term issues arise. Links are in the description to Winwing's store and uncut examples of me using the Hotas in DCS if you'd like to see them. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.